All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, going to get going here. Uh, my name is Eben, and welcome to today's uh, art stream. Um, today, I'm going to be taking this um, this uh, thing I made a couple of weeks ago in Blender. You can see here. Um, I kind of tweaked the scene a little bit from the last time we were working on it. So I added in some, um, some little, you know, some details here. I kind of made this sort of mock village down at the bottom there and added this sort of walkway going up the side. Um, I also tweaked a bit of the lighting, um, because I can't, um, I can't remember exactly how it was before, but the, uh, you can probably see on the, or could have seen on the, the, um, the thumbnail for the video that. Um, the, the castle was kind of blending in a little bit with the background, so I set up some lighting. I can actually show you real quick what I was doing. Um, if we dive into Eevee, it'll be a little bit quicker to kind of see what's going on here. Um... So you can see here, I've sort of set up um, set up some atmosphere here. You can see that with this sort of volumetric cube. And then I set up some uh, light blockers, which are just these simple planes. And this one, I sort of uh, cut out some random uh, squares from it. So it kind of gives this a bit more of a diffused light. So this is something you can do to sort of create the impression of, you know, big shadows uh, on your landscape from clouds or anything like that. Um, but I set that up so it was it was casting a shadow on this mountain behind, and I did that very deliberately so that um, our our castle object here was going to um, going to pop out a little bit more from our our camera view, as we can see here. Um, and then I just added this simple uh, walkway here. Uh, I probably could have spent a lot more time sort of refining that and getting it to blend in a little bit better. But since we're just going to be kind of painting over all of this anyway. Um, I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, same kind of goes for this sort of little random village here. Um, I just sort of set up a bunch of simple um, shapes and I kind of copy and pasted the the shape from uh, the castle up here, which we already made. Um, and I basically just sort of um, arranged these together and joined them and duplicated them. Uh, which is a really quick and easy way to um, create the impression of sort of a vast uh, cityscape or village or anything like that. Um, you can, if you check out my um, Divine City time lapse video, I kind of use a similar strategy there to create the impression of um, sort of a, a, a vast cityscape. Hey there, Wurzel, welcome. Um, so anyway, that's kind of what I did to set this up. I just adjust, adjusted the lighting a little bit, but otherwise I think everything um, I did here was covered in the last stream, or I think it was the last one. So um, I'll post a link for that in the video here, but otherwise you can just check that out um, on the channel if you missed part one. Uh, anyway, so we just set up a camera here and I, I moved some of these rocks around a little bit um, and I rendered it out. Uh, so you can see here, um, I did a few different passes for the render. Um, so this is the combined, this is everything together. And I really just exported the, uh, the AO and the mist. Um, I'm not even sure if I'll use these. The crypto mat is going to come in useful. Um, I didn't quite set it up right. So, uh, you know, I, as you can see, the castle is kind of, um, the same color, which may or may not be an issue because there's kind of a a faint outline there. I'm hoping I'll be able to just make that selection if I need to. Um, but we're going to see, we're just going to bring these all into Photoshop and uh, start painting. Uh, so let me bring these in here. Live streams, renders. So I set this up for a um, 4,500 by um, 3,000 
resolution. What's cool about the mist pass is it's actually transparent. So it's really just, we can see here if I knock down the opacity, if I really wanted to push that background back a little bit more, um, which I'm not totally sure if I want to do at this point because I already set up sort of some atmospheric effects there. Um, but if I did want to do that, I could use this, uh, this mist pass um, and uh, just sort of, you know, maybe add in some kind of uh, bluish overlay. We could set this to whatever we want, really. But, um, and, you know, mostly we're just going to be painting over our combined here. And if we need to maybe add in a bit more definition, we could use the, um, the AO, but this really isn't necessarily the scene for it. In fact, you know, you can see it really just draws out a lot of the, um, the sort of <laughs> the things you wouldn't notice, uh, in my like haphazard, um, arrangement of shapes here. Uh, but, um, so I think, you know, for the most part, we're just going to be working from here and sort of, um, you know, just kind of adding in from, from here forward. So the first thing I usually like to do with a render is I just kind of like going through a little bit and sort of, um, kind of just like, uh, how do I say this? Like, just sort of working out or like painting out some parts that are a little too 3D. Um, Cause right now this looks very, very rendered. It looks very like artificial almost. Um, so I want to kind of go in and, you know, I'll usually like just start with a, a mixer brush or something. And um, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and rasterize that. And then I also might just check my levels real quick, see if, you know, there needs to be any tweaking here. And this looks pretty good. Um, I don't want to push it all the way to the edge, edge of the highlight range because I want to save uh, some of those for our, um, our focal area or, or other key points. Um, but, uh, and we could do, we could make some color adjustments as well. Um, but I might kind of save some of that. Maybe we could, you know, beef up the saturation just a little bit, just because that's my, my general preference. Um, but it really depends upon the mood. And if this is more of kind of like a, you know, a battle scene or something, we might even drop the saturation a little bit. I think the, you know, so going back to our original concept here, I have the, um, where is it? There it is. I have the sketch right here. And, um, so this is kind of the scene that we were, we were looking to, to set up a little bit and it's sort of changed a little bit in terms of the overall composition, but I'm, you know, hoping to, you know, set up a, a similar dynamic with this character in the foreground and this sort of army down here and then this pathway kind of leading into, uh, into the distance. So I'm just going to pull this aside for now and um, let's bring our saturation back to where it was. And anyway, what I was getting at is basically like what I'm trying to um, set up here is maybe kind of like this is sort of like a peaceful area. Um, so maybe a little bit idyllic. And then we have these um, these guys coming in to to basically uh, plunder and um, destroy it or capture it or whatever. So. Uh, we can kind of subtly allude to that with how we set up the lighting and, and everything, um, but we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. Um, I think the first thing I want to do is just start to get in here and start painting, um, and especially areas like this where I know I just um, I want to see a bit of, of blending going on. So I'm going to bring out my, um, my wet brush here. Just kind of start doing some stuff like this and losing some edges. And that's kind of like, um, I'm actually, I'm probably just going to create a copy of this in case I want to uh, reverse any of these decisions or maybe bring back some of that detail. But basically, you know, everywhere in this, in this render, we have hard edges and that's, 
um, um, that's just not something we necessarily want to want to have. And just going in and, and sort of smoothing out some areas here and creating that contrast between um, between sort of you know more textured or hard edges and these sort of softer lost edges. That's really going to instantly uh, help create some some realism here. And like varying up some of those places where it looks like, um, you know, there's some sort of just, you know, really like digital polygon looking things, you know, hard edges and stuff that we wouldn't really see in nature. We're also going to go around and treat a lot of these edges too, you know, because here we can see it's just this kind of straight uh, sort of zigzag pattern here. And we want to make that look a bit more bit more naturalistic but no need to, to totally rush into anything yeah I, I, I like this line art as well um, I'm actually thanks for reminding me I have this over here on my other monitor but I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna bring this up in the corner so we can kind of it's good to, if you have an original sketch, um, to include it on your reference board. Um, just because, you know, there's a lot of really great information in that original sketch and a lot of intent. Um, and, you know, it's it can become easy to lose that, especially when you're kind of transitioning from 3D to, to Photoshop and you're doing all these different things. And you might kind of lose sight of what your... Um, original goal for for the piece was and that doesn't even have to be like you know such an obviously defined uh, goal but um, you know it, it's uh, I think there's there's a purity and I, I feel like I say this all the time but there's like this purity and simplicity to a sketch or a a value render or something like that that um, that can sometimes be lost as you move through the process. Another thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of take this lasso here because this wasn't actually separated in the um, the crypto mat layer, so I'm just going to do this manually. Just create a little bit of atmospheric separation because I do want this area to look a bit further away than it does now. And there's also going to be some some characters kind of riding through here and kicking up dust and stuff. So I'm just... Um, that's going to kind of contribute to a lot of this this haze that's going on down here. All right, and then we can kind of zoom around here and start thinking about how we want to um, render out this landscape here. Again, I'm going to go in with a wet brush here and just sort of um, start to mold things a little bit. <clears throat> I'm actually going to um, where's the object pass hmm that is strange that it didn't quite make it out 
Um, sometimes that happens. I'm not totally sure why. I hope I still have it here. Um, let's see if we can save this down again. Let's try it as a JPEG. That's a, a very good reason to um, to not close out of your render render window too soon. Sometimes when they're saved down, um, it doesn't quite translate well. All right, there we go. So these should line up. Yeah. Um, so here I can just select like this general area and um, just kind of paint within that selection so we don't really have to worry too much about you know um, about uh, you know blurring our uh, our hard edges here we can also use that same kind of selection to um, to set up some uh, some mist, some environmental uh, fog, and that kind of stuff, which we'll get into a minute in a minute here. But right now, I'm just kind of you know softening some things up a little bit, some places where we really don't need that kind of high level of of contrast or detail. Might even start adding in a little bit of color here and there that's not totally present in our render. I'm not totally sure about this rock back here, so I might just kind of paint that out a little bit and and, and in the same um, in the same motion sort of create a little bit of, of atmosphere here it's kind of um, once again sort of striking a balance between these harder and softer edges and in some cases just sort of implying that there's a bit of um, a bit of mist or something going on there I'm picking from the, the sky color to create a bit of sort of cloudy texture back here And even like in places like this, you know, even if it might be realistic to see that that hard edge all the way through here, um, you know, it can really benefit a painting to to lose part of that edge here and there, especially in the shadow side of an object. You can see already there's just like a little bit more a little bit more life and, and realism happening here. Of course, like there are areas that I really don't want to to mess with too much right now, and especially areas that are already a little bit detailed, um, where we want to have a decent amount of focus. I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna mess with those too much for the time being. even use um, this 
some cool effects brushes here, stuff like that. start creating a bit of um, a bit more kind of cloud like things here and as it transitions into the light we're going to move from that kind of more sky blue to more of a more of a warm white kind of color or even maybe a little bit into the yellow, but not quite. You can, can kind of mess around back and forth, see what works. The more kind of atmosphere we, we start to suggest here, the more scale we're going to imply. to flip it every now and then kind of get a different perspective as well there's another thing I wanted to do which was um, just kind of blend in this this whole walkway area I'm not you know because I would like I said I was being pretty lazy about how I set this up so um, this is something we can, can go in and just sort of tweak a little bit to, to make it work. And a lot of this we're going to um, gonna, we're going to be incorporating some photo textures as well. So um, I feel like the the blender textures are usually just sort of a starting off point. Of course, we want to get rid of any gaps at the base of this this structure here.
I'm kind of having the um, the landscape just sort of follow things a bit more fluidly and naturally, kind of just sort of sculpting things. So it looks like all of these sort of disparate elements um, that were formerly kind of 3D objects are actually um, existing in the same space. And like little areas like this where we can see there's a bit of a, a logical issue. We can just go in and kind of do a little bit of manual work there. Maybe even add some some new elements to kind of tie it together. I'm going in like I'm not really using the, uh, the strictly correct order of operations here, but I don't think there really is necessarily a correct order of operations. I think if, if anything, I'm just, um, I'm going in pretty detailed in this area, but, um, it's specifically because it's an area of focus. Um, if I was going into this little village and doing the same kind of thing here, um, that probably wouldn't be the most efficient way to approach things, but oh, hey there, welcome. Um, so uh, let's see here. Did I paint this whole thing? Um, no. So we started with a. This is a, a render from Blender. Um, can kind of see the original right here and this is sort of what we've done so far so some really small tweaks um, and for some reason this I think I was painting yeah I've been painting on the wrong layer actually so these are two different um, two different versions I'm gonna just take let's see let's re-import um, this here just so we have it This was our original render, and this these two are just going to have to be combined. So I'm just going to use a mask layer and quickly um, paint this out. This is because we did a little bit of nice uh, smoothing work in this foreground. Very subtle, but... Um, important. So let's just blend these together again. Um, yeah, so we're starting with this render, and we're kind of going in and painting over it. And that's sort of what, um, what we're working on today. As far as resolution goes, um, I, right now I'm working on um, 4500 by 3000, which is um, a two to three ratio and um, I, I think for something like this where there's a lot of detail that we can get from the render itself um, I generally work a bit higher as you can see you know we can zoom in pretty far and still work on stuff like this um, and actually I'm just kind of seeing now that I want to I want to get this edge back I think it's helping this this stand out a little bit and we can actually this is something I'm going to be doing anyway but we can go in and start to to tweak these edges as well and make them look a little bit more naturalistic but um, anyway yeah that's what I would I would recommend at least you know 2000 or 2500 minimum on your on your shortest side um, 
because otherwise you're just kind of you're you're losing a lot of that that great detail that we had with the with the render actually one thing i can do while i'm kind of in here is um let's drop this down to 30. um you can i guess i could be making these selections with crypto map but since we're once i don't know um I'm tempted to just kind of disregard that entirely and just start working with um just start working on on one layer or at least you know I might separate these out as they are um that's probably what I should have done in the first place. I can still do that um but oops um but you know i I just try not to to overcomplicate things too much so um Sometimes I just like to make selections and, and paint in them like this, but I am I am using the selection to to create a bit more depth, a bit more contrast between these areas. Um, anyway, this is something you you can do um, if you so choose. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to work with this one because, like I said, it didn't come out very well on the on the. Um, the crypto, uh, the crypto mass uh, export. Um, maybe if I reduce the tolerance to something like this. Um, of course, I could just select it manually. Um, or maybe the um, quick selection might be helpful here. No, yeah, they're too close. Um, but anyway, this is generally a good way to to sort of make selections and, and separate out layers. So what I'll probably do, um, maybe at least just with, you know, honestly, I'm probably not gonna I'm not gonna mess with this that much. I'm just gonna kind of do some some good old fashioned uh, manual painting here because. It's just simpler for me to, to wrap my head around. If this was like a bigger, you know, long-term kind of client project, I might have spent um, a bit more time at the beginning, uh, just sort of like separating things out into into different layers. And I might still do that with the foreground here. That'll probably be um, a good move. But, um, you know, for now, I'm just I'm kind of content to just sort of paint around things. and And the more I do that, the more... Um, you know, the more kind of painterly it's going to look anyway, which is, you know, a look I like to, I like to try to cultivate. And we'll get to this in a minute. You know, right now, obviously, this is super plain, and I just kind of blocked out the some very basic shapes there. Um, but um, as we move forward... I'm going to kind of um, uh, I'm going to, you know, mess with that design a little bit and try to um, you know, I have some I by the way, I I started out before we we started here by gathering an, a whole bunch of reference photos. Um we haven't even gone to this part which is, you know, we're going to kind of add in like a knight and some um some soldiers in the front there, but um, you know, I'm going to be using a lot of this and probably do some, some photo texturing and stuff with that. And, um, so a lot of this, this render may not be, uh, preserved in the end. Um, since we're talking about it, I think I'm just going to go in and grab this. And I'm just going to copy and paste that onto a new layer. Um, just so we can kind of comfortably go in and, you know, for example, um, take this area here and create a little bit of fog or lost edges or something like that. Um, 
Oops, I'm using the mixer brush still. There we go. And maybe even try to create some some more shadowy areas um, to reduce the contrast a little bit over here. Do some overall kind of tweaking, that kind of stuff. Just so we can pull our focus in a little bit more to um, to the more important areas. Yeah, already it's it's kind of vignetted the whole scene a little bit. I may have overdone it over here, but we can always, you know, kind of uh, introduce some some more detail back into that section, but. Um, I also, in our sketch, there was a, there's a little path running through there and the perspective was a little bit different, but I kind of want to keep that. I want to maybe establish that there's some kind of road or something so we can go in and, and sketch that real quick. Grab something like this and just think about where that's going to go. We're viewing it from a much sort of greater distance than we were envisioning before. But we still want to have something that's sort of guiding us through. And I think this, this section here um, is a little bit obtrusive. Um, and I think that was something I was thinking of in the render as well, but I didn't quite, um, let's see. I wasn't quite, uh, able to address that at the time, or, or I guess I just slipped my mind, but anyway, I just want to kind of see if we can take this maybe without distorting those buildings too much, just kind of make it look like it's a little bit, a little bit more flat. Like it's a little bit easier to, to get through this area, just so it's not an obstacle for the eye. And while we're in here, we might see if there's any other areas we want to sort of tweak and pull in a little bit. If we want to adjust overall shapes, anything like that to make things flow a bit better. So we don't want to mess with that too much because we don't want to offset those straight edges, but that should be pretty good. So just subtle things here, but oh, thank you, uh, Senya. I appreciate your, your vote of confidence here. I'm just, just because this, this lighting looks a little bit artificial to me. I'm going to kind of go in and maybe create a few a few little edges where the light is hitting. Do a little bit of good old fashioned painting here. This is where it comes in handy to have 
you know, a bit of a bit of uh, traditional painting skill at your disposal as well. Um, you know, right now it might stick out a little bit, but you know, as we move forward, this is going to start looking a bit more um, like you know a painting and, and a little bit less like sort of uh, this kind of weird render. Like I said, my main goal right now is to um, it's just to kind of you know wash out a bit of that 3D look. Maybe we can introduce a little bit of a little bit of atmosphere here at the base. Don't want to overdo it, which I may have already, but um, that's okay. Try the, um, this is kind of a fun one I don't use often enough. It's a remixer brush. By the way, all of these brushes I'm using are um, available from my uh, brush pack, which uh, should be in the description there. Um, I really enjoy using a lot of these to, to create a bit more of a, a bit more of a traditional kind of feel to things. But I think I'm already blending out that area a bit too much. Um, so I'm going to leave it alone. Um, sometimes I make the mistake of, uh, like, if something's not working for an area, I'll just, like, keep trying to work it and keep trying to to make it work and um, just end up kind of beating the hell out of it. Um, so definitely something to to be conscious of. Again, just a little bit more separation between planes here, especially towards the lower, um, uh, lower edges of, or, or towards the bottoms of these big vast shadow areas, just going to have a little bit of mist kind of collecting there. Again, I don't want to totally overdo it. And now this is kind of sticking out a little bit, but that's okay. We're just going to kind of draw over it. Don't want to have too much contrast there. And yeah, just try to blend this in a little bit too, I, I suppose. Oh yeah, I forgot I was creating this path. I got, <laughs> I got very distracted. Okay, let's go back here. I'm just gonna select a slightly, slightly brighter color so it's, it's very clear here. Gonna kind of go up through these mountains here, and then come out the other side. Reduce my brush size. 
It's definitely like it's not quite as clear cut as that other path we were we we're creating, but it is still a path, and it's something that's going to catch the eye and sort of bring us in. Um, we can have that kind of winding through the road. We can start to use our our imagination a little bit here and think of how you know this village is set up. Really kind of go very macro scale here, or micro scale, I should say. Just imagine some different paths going through here. And I'm, you know, here I'm seeing a lot of like very digital looking kind of artifacts, so I'm gonna smooth out a lot of that. But you can see we still have some really nice texture in here, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to keep a lot of that. And again, a lot of this is very, you know, it's very micro. It's probably, um, you know, probably not, I don't need to be going into this much detail at this point, but um, I don't know, it's, it's just fun. I really like going into these like sort of choppy 3D areas and trying to um, kind of make them look a little bit more a little bit more painterly and if you're having fun doing something uh, you might as well just keep going As for this village overall, I think it's a little bit kind of high contrast. I think we can push this back just a little bit with some, just some kind of dust, dusty sort of atmosphere stuff. Once again, especially around the, the base of these buildings. Also kind of doubles as reflected light in some areas. I just don't want this, I want this to be kind of a secondary area of focus, uh, not something that really steals too much attention. Really just something we see on the way to our, our ultimate goal here. I'm not really too pleased with how this corner is looking out, so I might, um, I just kind of mask that out a little bit. I think I lost a bit too much detail and definition there. So I'm masking out to the original render. Uh, behind it. And I'm just going to merge these down. What do we think so far? Those of you that are that are still hanging out. Any ideas? I feel like this shape overall is not really fitting with 
the scale that we're working on. So I'm going to kind of modify this a little bit. And we're coming up on like the, you know, towards the end of our first hour here. So um, I'm probably going to move on to photo texturing and, and getting our, um, our soldiers in here as well, since that was the original intent. Um, but I just want to kind of do a little bit more tweaking to this landscape here. It's looking pretty cool. Um, I do want to make sure I address this little, um, this is just a little artifact that showed up with the, um, with the render. Uh, so I'm just going to use the uh, clone tool to bring this down a bit. Fix up this little spot. Um, let me just try to get try that again. See if I can get it a little more clean. There we go. And from here, we can actually do the same thing if we want to extend this. Uh, again, I'm just going to clone from this area up here. Bring this down like that. Kind of a neat little trick. whole shadow here so I'm just gonna get rid of that yeah I mean the the render is going or the, the render is going to create a lot of things that are just like you know it can't it can't really uh, make design decisions so you know it's gonna create a lot of things that are just unnecessary and part of what we're doing now is kind of finding areas that aren't you know, strictly necessary, um, and kind of playing them down a little bit, allowing other areas to shine a bit more.
can be a nice little way to uh, accent a, a pathway. Just create a little bit of hard shadow. And I just want to make sure this path kind of goes all the way. There's some weird stuff happening over here. Um, I might just, yeah, I might just get rid of that. It's just a lot of unnecessary information because I want to make a clear, clear way for this path to, to get up. Yeah, I I wouldn't say it's it's quite as much work to to get rid of the details as to to paint them in. Um, but I mean, either way, you know, you you're you're putting the time in, and like a lot of this this texture, I'm gonna be able to keep, and that's gonna come through in the final painting, um, and that's gonna sit, end up you know looking really great, and it's gonna work well together. Um, and of course, you know, the advantage to, to doing that in Blender is it's all kind of cohesive. It has the same lighting scheme and everything. And, um, you know, it's all, it's already working well together. Um, it's just, but, but yeah, you absolutely, you know, ha still have to take the time to decide what is and what is not important. And, um, and yeah, a lot of that involves kind of sort of getting rid of a lot of those um, those elements of the render that just that aren't uh, aren't needed Create some little, some little bits here. I don't know, maybe they're like statues or something, but just some little embellishments. And we probably want to make sure this is all, all working as well. So we can carve out a little bit of a path or something here. It might be worth having a bit of a fence here now that I think about it. Or some kind of platform so people don't just go rolling off the edge. Let's 
it's more of a note to myself than anything. You know, we can go back later and make that a little bit nicer, but just kind of sketching this out a little bit. All right, uh, let's let's get into. Um, I'm gonna save this. Uh, so that's probably a good idea. Let's go to our videos, live streams. Gotta keep your folders organized. Uh, this is what number forty-eight. Right. Three, done. All right, let's um, let's do a little bit of a little bit of bashing here. Um, since you know time is of the essence here, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if we can expedite the process a little bit. Um, where's my pure F? There it is. So let's see what we have here. Um, I'm gonna start with doing a little bit of landscape work. Um, I just kind of pulled these from the internet real quick. These are not best resolution. I thought they were, but um, I think still might be workable in some capacity. I like all this stuff here. Um, at the very least, we can bring this in as a bit of a background. So here we can very usefully select this area. Duplicate that. Let's just create a sky layer and fill that. So we want to make sure the lighting is matching up here. Yeah, I don't. I'm not 100% about this. Maybe I'll try. Um, where'd it go? We could just do a straight uh, sky. Throw it back here. This move. That's pretty pretty poor quality as well. Let's see. No, that's pretty cool. Just have to tweak the the tone a little bit.
something like that. Just kind of get rid of that. And let's see what else. I'll delete that for now. Um, let's see what we can do with this. Still fairly low res, but um, I think there's some things that might be workable. Too quick adjustment here. That works pretty nicely, I think. Might just give it a little more shadow. saturation just a bit what else can we use this for um, yeah I'll do the same thing over here I think I see a good spot for that I almost wonder if we should I think just reduce the scale of some of these buildings. I feel like they're all a little bit too big. Um, I'm not sure if this will be totally possible, but let's give it a try.
think I'm going to try the same thing here. Let's just take all this. Copy paste. Shrink it down. Get that path back in here. Brush. We can use that. It's okay if things start to get a little bit, a little bit messy here. Can bring back some of that texture with the clone stamp. Maybe I'll even take this, do the same thing, and just scale it down a little bit. I don't know, maybe not. Anyway, back to this. What is this? Oh, that's part of the background, okay. Um, let's do a little bit more landscape stuff and then we can get into the, uh, the characters a bit more. I'm looking for something to go on this other side here. This might work. Let's see.
working. a little better just adding a bit of depth to things I'm just going to try to reproduce that a little bit as well maybe in the background I don't want to stretch it out too much because it is kind of a little bit low res but um, eh, maybe I won't use that again Let's try Let me use this again. Let's see if it works for this little section here. Definitely work. Don't forget to save. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I probably should. Let's try this. Pretty nice. Just gonna lower the saturation a little bit. Maybe not. I feel like there there needs to be a bit more green around here. So I'm gonna I 
I should have found some better photos here, but um, let me see if I have any anything better I can use in my my references here. Uh, Valley. Let's see what we got here. Hmm, that's kind of cool. I don't know if we can use... The, we might be able to use that for something. I don't know if it's exactly what I need in this situation, but... Ooh. I might have something here. That's pretty low res. Let's find something else. Maybe, maybe this will work. Uh, maybe not. Could work for this little section down here. But, let me do a quick search here. Um, do um mountain <laughs> let's start there um all right let's make sure this is large oh that's very nice Not super high res, but it might work. I probably should have gone to unsplash immediately. Sometimes I forget. Uh, let's just put this in references, landscapes, mountains. Yeah, I say this every time, but I really got to, got to, um, Uh, update my my references folder anyway uh, let's give this a try this could be really cool or it might not be you never really know until you put it on there this one might uh, it's definitely more of a distant mountain kind of thing all right let's try this um, Mask it up. Invert. Now let's just paint it in and see what happens. It's definitely uh, pretty high in saturation. Just want to tone that down a bit. Maybe lighten it up. All 
Good work, though. Let's see what happens if we keep painting that. Uh, this here. It's a little weird. I kind of liked how we had it before. Like that. I don't know if it's quite fitting. It's a shame because it's a really cool texture. Let's see if we can find anything else. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Let's try that. Might fit perfectly. We could even use it for both sides. Let's see. Sometimes you can just paint a little bit in and see how that how that works and then make your adjustments based on based on that. Yeah, that might that might do it.
Yeah, that's that's pretty nice. So I'm just creating a, a shadow side of this texture and a, um, a bright side of this texture. Because they're going to be two slightly different tones. I might just set these to, let's see, let's try um, overlay or something. Hard light might work. It's because I want to keep a lot of these shadows in here that I have set up. Um, all right. <laughs> There's so much more to go here. Um, yeah, let's try to develop this foreground a little bit. Not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to wrap this one up in um, the next 20 minutes. But, you know, uh, that can be our our part three. Um, maybe, maybe instead of developing our foreground quite yet, we can just kind of wrap up what we're doing here in the mid and the background. Um, and I think like this, we haven't done any development on this castle yet, so... Um, so let's dive into that just a little bit and then we can probably wrap it up for today. I did grab some, some castle things here so we can, um, maybe try a little bit of texturing with this as well. See if it fits. So 
first let's we could just set this to soft light as well maybe I don't know we'll see maybe take this section Get rid of that. Bump up the value. Tweak the hue. Actually, I should probably do that for the whole thing here. In case we end up using other parts. Let's delete that. Tweak the value. Let's try taking this Uh, we got a question here. Um, when you doing the 3D modeling in Blender using textures there already, you actually know that I will overpaint them later. Never use the actual Blender. Um, I use some of the the Blender texturing. You know, as you can see, there's um, there's a lot of that left kind of coming through here. Um, but I do I do go into it knowing that I'm going to be painting over it. So I don't try to get like the texturing perfect and like hyper realistic in Blender. Um, Cause yeah, that would just be kind of, um, that would kind of end up being a bit of a, a waste of time in the end. This is where things start to get pretty, pretty speedy. You got to be able to make some quick tweaks and stuff like this. Don't want our shadow values to be too dark. Uh, 
uh, because it's not going to fit with with our atmosphere. Let's bring this guy back. Maybe we can take one of these columns. Let's actually cut off the bottom. Yeah, feel free to uh, to drop any questions as I'm going here. I know I'm kind of just like, you know, in the zone a little bit, so I'm not I'm, and uh, I'm not doing quite as much narration as usual because um, this this stuff tends to take up a little bit more brain power than uh, than you know my usual kind of simplified painting process, but. Um, yeah, feel free to, to ask any questions. Let's see what happens when we paint this in. It may work, it may not work. It's always, always kind of a crapshoot. Looks pretty good. Hey, where'd my other things go? There we go. Let's really brighten that up. What the hell is happening here? Keep selecting the actual layer instead of the instead of the mask. Well, easy. Cool. It's starting to starting to shape up a little bit. Once we have a lot of these textures in here too, we can kind of start to, to do stuff like this duplicate them and 
move them around a little bit. Sometimes, like, you know, the stuff I'm doing at this uh, scale, I guess, like, you can get away with a lot, you know, and not having everything perfect. Because once you zoom out, um, it's going to look a lot different. Still probably a little bit too dark. It's amazing how um, when you get to this distance, how light your shadows actually become. It's like there, it's just a very slight difference between your shadow and your um, your deep shadow and your your midtone shadow values. So I'm just going in and. Lightening these up a bit. And one thing I actually didn't do, which I meant to, was while I was doing a bit more painting, is like this whole area here. It just is not connected properly.
looking pretty good. Um, let's see here. So nice to watch you do all these techniques. Uh, back PS. I did ask myself, how did Evan manage this? And one of four times I remember. <laughs> nice. One of four is pretty good. Um, yeah. Um, just just keep watching and keep trying to trying to uh, to replicate it. I mean that's that's the best way to learn. One thing I am noticing here is there's a tangent formed uh, between these two shadow sections here. Um, so there are a few ways I could resolve this. Um, I'm not entirely sure which one I want to do, but one of them is to just bring this this up a little bit. And I think that might work. I just don't want it to look too uh, artificial, but I think right now that's not it's not a problem. And you know, something to note here is I'm being super like loose and heavy handed with this because it's in the shadow and you really don't have to, you don't have to worry too much about the details in the shadows. Um, you know, our, we will naturally just focus on the brightest, most obvious parts of, of a painting. Um, and usually that means it's, uh, we don't have to we don't have to worry too much about what's going on in these sort of these shadow areas. Let's see what else? Maybe I do want to just kind of throw some little bits of shadow in here. A little bit here. I still think this this whole little village thing. Honestly, when I put these in there, it was really more of a placeholder than anything. And I may I may end up just throwing in some other photo texture over that. Um, another example of how like you know, what you do in Blender isn't necessarily what carries through on the, in the final image. Um, but it's just, it's just not quite fitting. And I think the scale isn't quite right and the angle and everything. Um, so I may swap that out. I like how this is all shaping up though, up here. And I think before, before I wrap up completely today, I just want to maybe put some finishing touches on this, uh, on this castle here. And maybe not necessarily uh, finishing touches, but um, at least some, a bit of polish. So let's actually go back. I want to find a nice, let's try this. A nice little tower that we can throw on the top. Something like that, but maybe not quite as, uh, as ornate. That's kind of cool. Why is that off center? Is that weird? You see that, right? It seems like a pretty serious design flaw. Maybe it's shifted over the years from weather. Anyway, let's, uh, this is pretty cool too. I love this. Um, I'm going to download this too. Hey Dolly, you are joining for the last couple minutes of the stream here. I'm just kind of putting some, um, finishing touches on, uh, our castle here, but I will show you in just a second. Just finding some, some other, wow, that's really cool. Is that a real place? Man. Um, 
this is a little bit more fitting with our our theme and I think it's approximately the right angle. Oh god. What did I do here? I'm gonna have to go through and organize all these layers too. Um, shit, where did I put that? I'm usually much more, uh, much more organized in my my layers and stuff, but. Uh, you know, like I said, trying to trying to expedite the process a little bit today. So let's take this. Copy paste. The angle is 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 pretty different, so I'm gonna try to. This might not work. Yeah, it's crazy how off center this is. I'm just gonna, uh, I gotta fix that. Well, let's get rid of this first. I mean, honestly, this is something I might be able to easily paint in anyway, but sometimes shortcuts are nice. Yeah, if anyone is a architecture or castle expert, I would be very curious to know why the top of this is so off center. Okay. Um, let's shrink this down. may have to do some sort of artificial shading here. So I'm gonna brighten this up. Take down that saturation. I, yes, I do still have to, to fit the army in there. This is going to be a four part uh, uh, series apparently which is fine I've actually this is kind of cool I like coming back to the same piece in these live streams and and um, you know doing things a little bit that way because um, I don't know it's just kind of cool uh, and feel free to let me know if you prefer to do like these multi multi-part kind of things or if you I mean it's I don't know it's pretty tough for me to get like a nice finished piece in two hours a lot of the stuff I've been doing on these streams has been pretty um, you know I don't know pretty pretty quick uh, or not so polished I guess um, and I like to have I like to have more of a polished piece at the end So I'm just kind of creating like a sort of an artificial um, shaded side to this. And then I'm gonna merge those together. I'm not totally sure this is going to work, but um, maybe I can put them around these guys. Maybe just the top. Maybe that's all I need. Maybe I've been wasting my time here. A weird off-center top. I 
That could work. I still have to. The shadow value, right? Pretty close. Let's just um, put one of these. I don't know. I guess the colors are a little off. Let me try to. It's just kind of a weird design, I guess. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to to revisit this. It's just not like... They kind of look like ducks. I don't know why. It looks like these weird duck things at the top. I think I'm going to have to get rid of those. Pretty much uh, spent for today. But, um, yeah, I mean, we can do... Let's do a quick... Uh, let's do a quick before and after here. Where's our original render? All right, there's our before. There's our after. I'd say it's definitely an improvement. Um, but of course, we've only been working on a very, <laughs> very small part of the whole canvas. Um, I think it definitely definitely looks looks better and um yeah i think it'll look great with some some other stuff in the foreground let's bring out that sketch again so we can see kind of what we're after um we got this guy he'll be right here um and then his army is kind of coming in down there so for next time i think i might make a little more tweaks to this castle here and maybe the mountains in the back I might swap out this village here, and then of course we're going to add in all of this great stuff in the foreground. We're going to add textures to this too, so it doesn't look so so 3D, um, but I think this is coming together pretty well. Um, let me know if you have any, uh, any ideas or any questions or anything, um, and thank you guys for, for joining uh, today's stream. Um, Hope to do one again next weekend, but just keep an eye out in um, the Discord channel if you haven't joined that already. That's in the um, the link uh, in the in the description, or keep an eye on my Instagram. I'll also uh, post uh, uh, there if I'm going to be doing a live stream. Um, trying to do this every week, but it's not always feasible. But anyway, um, thank you guys, and I will uh, catch you next time. <laughs>